In this video, we are going to talk about the reactions of monosaccharides. Then, we're also going to discuss disaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. So here are your learning targets. Now recall that we said carbohydrates are the most abundant biomolecules. They are the main source of energy for living organisms, and they serve as structural components. For example, in DNA, we have a sugar called ribose. For plants, we have cellulose which is located in the cell wall. Carbohydrates are organic compounds, so they are mainly composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in 1 is to 2 is to 1 ratio. And we have many types of carbohydrates, monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. For monosaccharides, we refer to them as simple sugars. So they are the smallest units that make up any carbohydrates. So all carbohydrates, they have monosaccharides. That's why we call them the building blocks. And in the human diet, you can see three monosaccharides, glucose, galactose, and fructose. We also talked about anomers. Anomers are cyclic monosaccharides differing from each other in the configuration of C1 or carbon-1 or C2 or carbon-2. For aldoses, it is usually carbon-1, and for ketoses, it's usually carbon-2. Then we talked about the anomers in hemiacetals. We said that if the hydroxyl group is on the right side, this is an alpha sugar. If the OH or the hydroxyl group is on the left side, it is a beta anomer. Now, how do we know if it is an alpha or beta if we are given a Hayworth projection? So it is an alpha carbohydrate if the OH of C1 is pointing to the opposite direction of the CH2OH or the methanol. So here it is upwards and this one is downwards. So this is an alpha. Or it could be this one is upward, this one is downward. That is an alpha. Now if they are on the same side like this, so this methanol is upward and this one is upward, this is a beta carbohydrate. So here we have galactose and fructose. So this one is a beta galactose. This one, they are the same. CH2OH and OH, they are both upwards. So these two are beta sugars. Now, monosaccharides, they undergo chemical reactions. And the first chemical reaction that we're going to talk about is the glycoside formation. A glycoside is basically a sugar bound to another functional group, okay? So this happens when a monosaccharide reacts with an alcohol. So for example, I have an alpha glucose. So this alpha glucose will react with methanol and HCl as a catalyst. This one will attack this OH to form this. So I'm not going to discuss the full reaction that happens here. That would be for another video. What I want you to think right now is that this hydrogen reacts with this OH. That's why you have an H2O. And the remaining CH3 bonded with the remaining oxygen here. That's why you have a methyl alpha D glucoside. Okay. Now this one, this methyl could go down here same but it could also go upwards if we have an upward methyl group this will become a methyl beta d glucoside okay the next reaction would be reduction reduction is basically the gaining of electron either by adding hydrogen or removing oxygen so i have here d glucose so here we're going to use a reagent sodium borohydride Sodium borohydride is your reducing agent, meaning it's the one that will give hydrogen. So this sodium borohydride will give hydrogen to this oxygen and will give hydrogen to this carbon, breaking this double bond. So when this carbon receives another hydrogen, you will have CH2. And if this oxygen receives a hydrogen, you will have an OH. With that, you will get an alcohol. So this aldehyde group became an alcohol. Okay, And the resulting product is what we call a glucidol. So this is a D-glucidol, which is an alditol. This is also called as a sorbitol. 
The next reaction that monosaccharides undergo to is oxidation. When we say oxidation, there is a loss of electron. It is either by removing a hydrogen or adding an oxygen atom. This glucose molecule has two functional groups. Remember, we have the aldehyde group and the primary alcohol group. So C double bond OH and OH, the hydroxyl, so this is an alcohol. Our glucose molecule can produce three products during oxidation reaction. Okay, this would depend on the reagent use. When we say reagent, it is something that reacts with your glucose. When our glucose molecule reacts with bromine in water, we will have a gluconic acid. What happens is that this bromine in water, our oxidizing agent, will add oxygen here in our aldehyde group. Okay, so remember again, this is C double bond OH. This bromine will break the double bond and add oxygen. So a lot of things happen, but when that happens, guys, we will have a carboxylic group, COOH. So if we expand this, we will have a C double bond O and an OH connected to this carbonyl carbon. Next, when we have a hydrogen peroxide or commonly known as agua oxinada, this one will react with the primary alcohol group and when that happens we will have a carboxylic group here at carbon number six now when we have a stronger acid like nitric acid it will not only oxidize our aldehyde group but also our primary alcohol group at carbon number six what happens that this aldehyde group and this primary alcohol group will be oxidized and be converted to carboxylic acids, okay? Again, to summarize, if our glucose reacts with bromine in water or we use a bromine in water as a reagent, the aldehyde group turns to a carboxylic acid. If we use a hydrogen peroxide, it's the primary alcohol that turns into a carboxylic acid. But if we use a stronger acid, both of them will become a carboxylic acid. Now, let's go to the disaccharides. From the prefix di, these are made up of two monosaccharides. For example, we have two alpha glucoses. So the hydroxyl group of this first alpha glucose will react with the hydrogen of this alpha glucose. Okay, so this is carbon number one, this is carbon number four. So when they react, it will release water to form a maltose. Now this bond is called an alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. Why? Because it's the hydroxyl of carbon number 1 of this alpha glucose and the hydrogen of this alpha glucose, carbon number 4. Okay? So this is alpha because you have two alpha glucoses. Now the reaction is called a condensation reaction. Okay, so when two alpha glucoses combine, the reaction is called condensation and it releases water now if you want to break this bond the reaction will be called a hydrolysis here you're going to use water that's why it's going in so that you'll have two separate alpha glucoses same thing with beta galactose and beta glucose so here it's the hydroxyl of carbon number one of beta galactose and the hydrogen of beta glucose carbon number four so again condensation reaction you will release water and you will form a glycosidic bond so this time it's kind of different it's like this now what if we have an alpha glucose and a beta fructose okay so this time they are different anomers so when that happens via condensation reaction we will produce a sucrose so the glycosidic bond is called a glue alpha 1, this is an alpha glucose and the carbon that reacted is carbon number 1. And beta 2 through glycosidic bond because this is a beta fructose and this one is carbon number 2. Okay, Sir, I thought this is carbon number 2, 3, 4, 5. How does it happen? It's actually this hydroxyl group of carbon number 1 and the hydrogen of carbon number 2. So basically, beta fructose flipped. That's why carbon number 2 
went here. Now let's proceed to the oligosaccharides. So these are short chains of monosaccharides. So in some books, it's more than 10. Some books, it's less than 20 monosaccharides. So for example, we have a disaccharide, a maltose, okay? Again, the bond is 1,4-glycosidic bond, all right? Now, if I add another alpha glucose, this hydroxyl group and this hydrogen will react, okay? So what will be the bond? It's still 1,4. This will now be called as a maltotriose because you have three glucose sugars. Now, we can keep adding alpha glucoses to have a maltotetrose if we add this one. But if we add two, we will have a maltopentose. Now, let's proceed to the polysaccharides. So these are commonly found in nature, and they are also called as glycans. Now, we have two types of polysaccharides. We have the homopolysaccharides and the heteropolysaccharides. When we say homo, meaning same, these sugars are the same, one monosaccharide. So for example, these are all glucoses. So that is a homopolysaccharide. But if we have a glucose, galactose, fructose, glucose, they are all different. We call it a heteropolysaccharide. Now we can also have an unbranched and branched homopolysaccharides. So unbranched homopolysaccharides, they are the same monosaccharides in a linear form, linear structure. But if it is branch, you have branchings or connections going up and or going down. Same with heteropolysaccharides. If it is an unbranched heteropolysaccharides, it is a linear polysaccharide composed of different monosaccharides. If we have a branch heteropolysaccharide, there is attachment. Now, we will only talk about homopolysaccharides because they serve as the storage forms of monosaccharides in humans, plants, and bacteria. The first one is starch, okay? Starch is the storage form of monosaccharide in plants. We discussed this in the first video. Starch is the main carbohydrate in the human diet. So your bread, your cereal, the rice, they are all starch. Starch are made up of glucoses. So this is a structure of a starch, but let's look at a small portion of starch. So as you can see here, if you notice right away, the bond here is alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. Now it can repeat and bond to another glucose because remember this is a polysaccharide. So this could be 1,4 glycosidic bond as well. So this is your 4, this is your 1. And we also have a branching here. So the bond here is 1,6 glycosidic bond because this is the carbon 1. And this is the carbon 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so the circle should be here. Now we have a branching, okay? So the bond here is alpha 1, 6 glycosidic bond. So because this is carbon number 1, and this one is the carbon number 6. This is a wrong circle, by the way. So this should be this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Again, not this one. Okay, so what does this imply? It implies that starch that is unbranched is connected by an alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. And that is called an amylose. Okay, if we have a branch starch, it is connected by alpha 1,4 and alpha 1,6 glycosidic bonds. And the name will be amylopectin. Okay. So amylose is digested more slowly due to its linear structure. So it's kind of difficult to be digested. So what's the biological relevance? There is a slower increase in blood sugar when we consumed unbranched starch. But if you have a branched starch, the amylopectin, it is digest quickly. So the glucose will be pumped or your glucose will spike up, which means that there is a quicker release of glucose or blood sugar. Okay, so which one is safer to consume? It's for you to find out. Next, we have glycogen. Glycogen is a homopolysaccharide made up of glucose as well. So this is the storage form of glucose in animals and humans. So this structure is very similar to starch, meaning it could either be branched or unbranched. 
and it could contain alpha 1,4 and alpha 1,6 glycosidic bonds. The only difference is that glycogen has a repeating branch points occurring to every 8 to 12 glucose residues. So meaning for every 8 glucose, you have branching here, 8 to 12. But in starch, the repeating branch points or the amylopectin will have a repeating branch points every 24 to 30 glucose residues. Another polysaccharide that is important is the dextran. These are the dextrans are the structural components in bacteria and yeast. So they are made up of alpha 1, 3 and alpha 1, 6 bonds. But it could also contain an alpha 1, 2 and alpha 1, 4 glycosidic bonds. So this is 1, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Another polysaccharide is the cellulose. So again, if you recall, structural components in plants. So they make up the cell wall. Cellulose is an unbranched homopolysaccharide. Okay, so it is linear. Here, the glucose have a beta configuration linked by beta 1,4 glycosidic bonds, and they cannot be digested by humans. So this is the cellulose in the cell wall under the microscope, and this is the structure of cellulose. Now let's go to the acidic polysaccharides. So these are the types of polysaccharides that contain acidic functional groups. So this could be a carboxyl or a sulfate group. So an acidic homopolysaccharide is composed of a repeating units of a single type of acidic monosaccharide. One example is hyaluronic acid. Now, if we have an acidic heteropolysaccharide, it is composed of repeating units of more than one type of monosaccharides, including acidic sugars. So this one, the best example would be heparin. Okay, so let's talk about hyaluronic quickly. Hyaluronic acid is a non-sulfated glycosaminoglycan, which is an important component of connective tissues in animals. When we say glycosaminoglycan or the GAG, it is a long polysaccharides with repeating disaccharide units. Okay, it's not a monosaccharide that is repeated, but rather a disaccharide unit. So hyaluronic acid is composed of repeating disaccharide units of glucuronic acid and N-acetylglucosamine. It is linked by beta-1,3. This is 1 and this is 1, 2, 3 here and beta-1,4 glycosidic bond. So this will be the 1, and from this, glucuronic acid is the 4. So what makes this N-acetylglucosamine acidic? It's this one, the acetyl. For heparin, the acidic property came from the sulfated glycosaminoglycan, meaning you have sulfur. So the main function of heparin is for its anticoagulant properties. So meaning the blood won't clot so it will remain fluid or the blood will remain fluid so it consists of repeating disaccharide units that include glucosamine and either hydronic acid or glucuronic acid linked by alpha 1,4 glycosinic bond so here is an hydronic acid it's sulfated and here you have a sulfated glucosamine now i have here a table summarizing the types of carbohydrates we have the monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides, polysaccharides, and their structure, some examples, and their function. So please pause this video so that you can read them. Then this table compares and contrasts the different polysaccharides. I have here starch, glycogen, cellulose, heparin, and hyaluronic acid. I didn't include dextran here. So you can also see their monomers, glycosinic bonds, properties, and their biological importance. And for the reactions of monosaccharide, I have here glycoside formation, reduction, oxidation to aldonic acid, oxidation to uronic acid, and oxidation to aldaric acids. So here are the descriptions and the examples.